Greetings. This is Jerry Rivera of the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSND. The video you are about to view details the Avaya Diagnostic Server install process using the attended mode. The install will show the steps to install the SAL Gateway 2.3 and the SLA Monitor Server 2.3. The video you are viewing will demonstrate the steps to install the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 in the attended mode. The Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 has two components. Those two components being the SAL Gateway 2.3 and the SLA Monitor 2.3. Both components can be installed with this installer or either one individually. If earlier versions of either component are previously installed, the choice to upgrade is offered. There is some data that needs to be gathered and required checks need to be made pre-upgrade. The system needs to be running Red Hat Linux version 5 or 6 in either the 32-bit or 64-bit mode. The latest version of the Java 1.7 JRE is required. The server itself must meet the documented minimums for processor, memory, and hard disk. The recommended hard disk configuration is to have a minimum of 220 gigabytes of free space for a new installation. That space must be available in the slashed op directory or if a separate slash var partition is available it can be additive to what is available in slashed opt, assuming the slashed op space meets the minimums for the SAL and SLA mon binaries. The automatic software update feature will be offered to be installed. An SMTP server, SMT server port, and the administrator email is required. Optional fields for SMTP server authentication can be entered if the server acquires authentication. A secondary administrator email can be provided if necessary. Avaya Data Center information is defaulted and should be accepted in most circumstances. The SAL Models package is resident in the installation package or can be downloaded from the Avaya Data Center if the firewall permits at time of installation. The video shows the location where the models exist in the directory structure after the installer is expanded. The SAL policy server and SMTP subagent choices will also be offered. The installer will ask several SLA monitor questions and if the WebLM server application is to be installed. These choices will be offered in the open terminal window. Let's start the install. At the Linux console, I have opened the terminal window and have elevated my user permission to the Linux super user root. Previously, I SCP'd the install package to the system and will extract it now using the tar command shown. After the package has expanded, there is a directory created called ADS Installer and the ADS version number 78. I am changing into that directory to launch the install. The file called install.sh followed by the option of minus attended will start the install process. I have entered that now. A few questions will be offered in the terminal window. The first of those questions is to review and to accept the end user license agreement. Scrolling through it, I have accepted it, which brings us to the first install question. I have selected choice three to install the applications of the SAL gateway and the SLA MON server. I specifically set up this Linux machine for this demonstration so I can show a message that the installer provides indicating something less than the recommended hard disk listed here as required. We can disregard the hard disk limitation but please note that if this were a production machine the SLA MON database may not be able to store the 60 days of data depending upon the number of subnets provisioned. The Linux environment is evaluated and an X11 window is presented for the SAL gateway questions to be addressed. Click Next through the initial system installation screen. Click the Agent Gateway checkbox and press Next. 
have the installer adjust the configuration files by clicking Next. The next screen is the Automatic Software Update Configuration screen. A positive selection of On or Off must be made in the drop-down box. I am selecting On and pressing Next. The SMTP configuration page is presented and the SMTP server hostname or IP address SMTP port and the administrator's email are required entries. The others are available if server authentication is required or an alternate email is desired. The Auto Solution Element ID screen is presented next. Select the Auto Create button if the system has not been pre-registered. In this example I am using the Manual button. Using the manual button requires that you already have utilized the pre-registration process and acquired the correct customer information. Enter that information in the three fields provided. The IP address can be skipped as it is optional and it will pick up the system's IP address provisioned. Pressing Next, accept the default cell gateway, user, and group. Accept the Avaya Core Concentrator and Remote Server defaults. If a proxy server is required, enable the checkbox and fill in the appropriate details. For this demonstration, I will not be using a proxy server. The next several screens allow for the selection of the SAL models, which in this release have been implemented as part of the standard install. The models are located in a subdirectory called Models, where the install package was extracted to. I am browsing to that directory and selecting the package called Models.zip. Pressing the Next button moves us along to the Policy Server screen. For the Policy Server and SNMP subagent entries, I am accepting the defaults. Fill in those details if required in your situation. Pressing the Next button at this point starts the install. The install takes about 15 to 22 minutes. I have increased the video playback to save time. I will return when the SAL install has finished. The SAL install has finished, and note that the SAL version is 2.3, which is the release of the SAL component of ADS 2.0. Selecting the Done button closes the SAL X11 window, and we will proceed with the SLA MON 2.3 install, which is all CLI based. There are several questions to be addressed, starting with the installing of the WebLM server, letting the installer configure the firewall, and setting up the syslog server. All of those questions I have answered yes to. The installation will then start. The command prompt has returned, which means the install of the ADS 2.0 components of the SAL Gateway and SLA MON 2.3 completed successfully. Bringing up a web browser, you can see that the SAL Gateway and next the SLA Monitor server is running. This brings us to the last part of the install, which is creating SLA Monitor users to log into the server. Please now view a short segment from another video I created demonstrating administering an ADS admin and view only user. I typically create two users for the SLA MON functionality. The first type is an administrative type user that I create as ADS admin and put that user in the ADS admin group that is created during the install called EQM ADMIN. The second user I create is a basic user that can log into the SLA MON server and perform various monitor functions, but is prohibited from creating or modifying things like zones or test patterns. That username I use is ADS user. Any user on the Linux server can be added into the EQM ADM group, but for this demonstration I'll be using the two, two usernames I noted previously. 
As you can see, I have logged into the Linux shell of the server we installed the ADS 2.0 application on. I will need to become the super user to perform this operation. I am now issuing several commands to create the users and group associations. The first command is user add minus capital G EQM admin ADS admin to create the admin user and then we'll assign it a password to protect it using the password ADS admin command. The next command creates the ADS user with the command user add ADS user. Assign a password to it to secure that account with password ADS user. Please disregard the bad password output as it, I am using a simplistic password for common lab use in this example. Using the command cat slash etc slash passwd piping it to grep ads, you can see our two new users have been created and added to the system. Finally, using the command cat slash etc slash group piping it to grep for ads, you can see that the user ads admin has membership now in the eqm adm IN group for administrative privileges to the SLA MON application. That concludes the administrative responsibilities for installing a new SLA MON ADS 2.0 server. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.